what are you missing? What are you not experiencing all over the world, all over everything? So this is so silly to say, you don't want to miss things, you're missing everything, or to sit there and say, I have to get what I want before I die. It's so silly. So you wake up and you realize, I'm running as fast as I can after what? Nobody wins. It's not true that he or she who dies with the most toys wins. They die. And the toys stay there and either they rot or the people steal them or they leave them for their kids who didn't even want them. What kind of win is that? What did you do with your life? And so as you circle the sun, I'll keep going back there, as you circle the sun every year and you say, how did I do running after what I'm trying to get? You better take another look because nobody's ever gotten it, nor did it ever last. One of the laws they teach you is the law of diminishing returns. It's an economic law. The law of diminishing returns. What does it say? The more you get it, the less you want it. Keep running. Keep running. Because that which turned you on yesterday, you're going to turn it up a little less today. When you have that brand new car and it smells new and you're showing it off to everybody, man, that is bliss city to go to that car and show it around. What if you show it to everybody, you had it for a year, and it squeaks a little bit? How you doing? You bliss out every time you get in it? Not a chance in the world. So you're playing a losing game and you don't realize it. That's why you have to run so fast, because it's not taking care of the problem. It's compensating. If I keep running, if I keep doing new things, I feel a little bit better, but I got to keep working at it. How about you? And the answer for everybody, I know you. Why? I don't have to know you. The answer is yes. Why? The outside cannot satisfy the inside. All it can do is temporarily compensate for what's lacking inside. It cannot fulfill what's inside. Here get married and have a beautiful relationship for 10 years and then have them leave you or die or go with somebody else. How you doing? I was better before I met him. I can't believe how much I hurt. I don't feel any of the love that I used to feel. Oh, I see. So it really worked, didn't it? As long as it's what you want, it works. You want this beautiful relationship. It's going to fix everything. Oh my God, it fixes everything that's wrong with me. I've never felt this much love. I feel like a new person. Okay. You've had it for five days. Okay. I'm taking it away. No. Well, I thought it fixed you. Well, no, I need it. It did not satisfy that need. It compensated for the need. It is still there. It's there. You just take off the compensation and there it is, a raw wound. Who is willing to talk so honestly? If you want to grow spiritually, you better talk honestly. So you come down and you realize, is there an alternative thing I can be doing? Because otherwise, you admit it, I don't feel good inside. I don't feel whole. I don't feel worthy of love. I don't feel successful. I don't feel my life has tremendous meaning, right? People got all this stuff going on in there. Insecurities and shame and guilt and all kinds of stuff based on the past, things they've done or didn't do and so on. So how can I deal with this other than running away from it? Other than staying so busy with things that distract me, that distract me from myself, which includes everything you do outside, so that I don't have to deal with this inside. And then I said, I feel better. You do feel better, but it's not fixed. So the alternative is called spirituality. At least that's what I call it. The alternative is to sit there and say, if I'm not okay inside, let's fix it. It's fixable. Look inside, see where the lacking is, where the trouble is, where the darkness is, and work with it. Find out why it's that way instead of finding how to compensate for it and keeping it in there. Then you're not running and you're sitting. You stop for a minute. And you look in there and you say, why do I feel lonely? Why do I feel insecure? Why do I feel this lacking? Why do I feel there's no meaning to my life? You know what the meaning of life is? I'm gonna tell you right now. The meaning of life is the experience of life. What's the meaning of Disney World? You were supposed to experience the rides and the people and the flowers and Mickey Mouse and all these different things that were supposed to bring you joy. The meaning of Disney World is the experience of the event. The meaning of life is the experience of life. That's why you took birth. That's why you're here. And that's why you go through all these different Disney World-like experiences. There's lots of different experiences in Disney World. There's lots of different experiences in life. How many? Oh my God, how about every second of your life is a different experience. Every single moment is different, isn't it? The meaning of life is the experience of life. And you get a certain number of years to experience it, and that's a lot of experiences. 
and all you do is complain. You think the meaning of life is getting what you want. You know you do. The meaning of life is getting what I want and avoiding what I don't want. No. If you're whole and you're happy, you go here and you experience life, all of it, every second of it. All the weather and all the people and all the foods and just everything there is. It's unbelievable. Everywhere you look, there's thousands of things. And then you go and look somewhere else. Look to the left, different. Look to the right, different. Up, up, up. Are you kidding me? It's a phenomenal experience. No, it's not. Why? Because I'm not okay inside. And the only part of life that I want is that which makes me feel better. We got it now? And the part of life I don't ever want to have is the part that makes me feel worse. So because you're blocked inside, because you have this problem inside that you're not doing well, you can't do life for the purpose of life. You have to limit it to what you want, what you don't want. Now you come down to what do we do about this? You look inside, once and for all, what do you see? Am I okay? Why are you not okay inside? That's all I want to know. That's all I want to work on. I don't want to compensate for it. I don't want to explain it. I want to find out, is this my natural state that I'm not okay inside? No, it's not. Your natural state is ecstasy. Your natural state is completeness, wholeness, abundance at a level you can't even imagine. So much enthusiasm, so much energy, so much love, so much clarity and inspiration. That is your natural state, period. Then the question becomes, so why don't I feel that? Now that's a serious question. The reason is, when you have disturbing experiences in your life, do you like that? What do you do with them? You suppress them. I don't want to think about them. I don't want to talk about them. I don't want them to have happened. That means you push them away. You store them inside yourself. If you're going to store all the disturbing experiences you've had in your life, what's it going to be like in there? Disturbed. You don't need any more teaching. It's that simple. If you collect food that made you sick and have it on the menu, you're going to get sick. If you collect stuff that bothered you inside of you, it's going to bother you. And it does. It comes back up when you're sleeping. It comes back up when somebody's talking to you. It reminds you of it. Yes or no? It keeps getting hit and it's stimulated. And you have to struggle to get away from it. You know, or go on vacations and go on drugs or alcohol, whatever it is. You have to try and get away from yourself. Because you're not doing okay with yourself. Why? Because you stored this stuff inside. I don't want any more metaphysical discussion or philosophy. I don't like that stuff. I don't need that stuff. It's pretty straightforward. If you store inside of you everything that ever bothered you from your childhood all the way up, including today, things bothered you. Somebody said something. Now what happens when you see them tomorrow? <laughs> if you store it inside of you, it's going to stay inside of you. Why? Because you're making it stay inside of you. You store all these patterns and they're determining whether you're open or closed. And if you're open, you feel passion. And if you're closed, you feel depressed. It's that simple. So the question is, do you want to go out there and try to find what turns you on and make sure you keep it and make sure it still turns you on, which means everything has to stay the same? Or do you want to sit there and say, I want to work on myself, not on everybody else, everything else. I want to work inside. I want to get rid of the blockages that are keeping me from feeling passion, that keep me from feeling love. All right, fine. Now, what do I need to do? go back and find every blockage in there. How do I know where they are? They're suppressed and find them and then apologize to people. Oh my God, no. Don't you dare think like that. I'd be so tired. <gasps> There's a lot of stuff in there. <laughs> and some of, what, what, happens, what happens if somebody's dead that you need to work it out with? Oh my God, I need a medium or something, right? But I don't believe in that. So, you know, no, no. It's way easier than that and much more natural than that. The energy underneath does not want those blockages in there. The Colorado River does not want the Hoover Dam to be there. How do I know? Well, it's been there for what? 40, 50, 60 years? Take down one brick, that river goes through and it would rip up all the pieces if it could, wouldn't it? Give it a chance. It's not called a leak, it's called liberation. To you, it's a leak. To the river, it's, oh boy, come on guys, we got out of here. It's the same thing inside of you. Your blockages are blocking this beautiful flow of Shakti, of energy. It doesn't want to be blocked. It will push them out of the way. It happens every day of your life. Stuff gets pushed up, you're driving in the car, you're doing okay, and all of a sudden this thing comes up, you remember what your mother did, or what your father did, what your first boyfriend, how he hurt you, you see a sign that reminds 
what do you do? Boom! Push it right back down. I don't want to deal with this. I'm telling you, the Shakti, the spirit, the chi down there is going to push this stuff out of the way. It does not want it to be there. It doesn't want blockages to be in the way of the flow. Just like the river doesn't. But you will not let it happen. Will you? There's no way. If all of a sudden you're sitting there and somebody says something and you feel the insecurity you felt when your father yelled at you, you do something to avoid that. Tell the person to apologize. You can, excuse me, I have to go to the bathroom. You walk away. Okay, I'm doing better now. That's how you deal with it. You understand that? I'll teach you how to deal with it, but that's how you deal with it. So it is coming up all the time. It gets pushed up by different situations in your life, and you don't want to. So you're scared of this stuff coming up, and so you resist it. You push it away. You find it. You avoid situations that would make it come up, even if they're totally natural situations. You don't have to do anything. In fact, if you would not do anything, it'd be fine. All you have to do is not resist, not fight the process, not not be able to handle this natural process of purification that is going to take place. You don't have to go down there and make it happen. Like people write me sometimes, there's a lot of stuff down there. How do I know which one to work with? It's right in front of you. <laughs> oh, but but this isn't my major one. I don't care. If you will work with the one that's coming up now, where do you see what happens? And then you're actually going to see. It's perfect. It knows exactly which one needs to come up. It's like like pulling a string to unwind a ball of thread that's tied together. You better pull the right string, or it all gets tighter. It knows exactly what needs to come up next. And if you can let go of that one, the next thing happens. The next thing happens. You don't have to pay attention. You just don't resist. It, but you're not able to do that, so that becomes your spiritual job. Not finding what will compensate for it that keeps it inside. Not going down there trying to get rid of it because it's bothering me. No. Can you sit in there, consciously centered, clear, and say, "Come on up, come on up. I don't want you in there." And it starts to come up, and you're sorry you said it. Why? If it was stored with pain. Coming back with pain because that's what you're releasing. You're releasing the pain you store. Well, can I turn the pain into like sweetness? No, no, you can't. You are not able to handle the situation when it happened. Therefore, you resist it and push it down there. Your growth, which is the meaning of your life, your inner growth, is to now be able to handle what you weren't able to handle before. It's called evolution. It's called adaptability. It's called survival of the fittest. It's inner evolution. If you will relax through everything, there's no resistance. You can't resist when you're relaxing. Resistance takes muscle. Resistance takes pushing inside. It takes energy. If you relax, then there's no pushing. There's no resistance. But but it hurts. We talked about that. That pain is childbirth. That soul birth. And so basically, you just relax when you feel it. If you want out, you gotta let go. And so it happens every day. Do the little things first, not the big things, and you keep letting go. And eventually, you build that inner strength that sees it's worth it to let go. Because I feel much better on a regular basis. That's because you have more energy. That's because you're not as blocked as used to be. And it will just happen by itself. You don't have to do anything. As I said, I prefer you don't do anything, but you won't be able to. You want to protect yourself. You want to manipulate and control people so it doesn't happen. Then you're in the wrong direction. If you sit there and say I'm afraid that this person's going to critique me badly or say something badly about me, good, good, let go, let go. Just keep letting go. Just keep letting go. Relax and release. Relax and release. And it works. How can it not work? The stuff in there is what's messing up your life. And if you stop keeping it in there, it's going to come up. How will I know it came up? How do I know what I need to work on next? It will be in your face. Be here now. Don't worry. It's right there. Just don't fight with it. Don't not like it. Doesn't mean you're going to do well with it. I used the example the other day. You learn to play tennis. You got a coach. You're very, very good with your forehand. Man, I am amazing. People, wow, how long have you been playing? That's how good I am with the forehand. I turn my backhand. If you're that person's coach, where are you going to hit the ball? At the forehand? Before you hit the backhand, because it needs to get better. All right. That's how you look at life. You're supposed to be challenged. The coach that's hitting you at your weak spot, don't fire him. <laughs> you keep hitting where I'm not good, and I'm embarrassed. People see I don't know how to play. What are you crazy? 
you can't get better if you don't work at the places where you're weak. And so life is really good at hitting your stuff, isn't it? And by the way, when it's not hitting your stuff, you're afraid it will. You're afraid that something will happen that will hurt you. It will hurt your heart. It will make your mind get bothered. That something won't be the way you want. So you go out there and try to make sure it doesn't happen. No. You open up. You look at what you're supposed to be doing. And you do it. And then things happen. Bosses yell at you. This happens. That happens. The relationship doesn't work out. All kinds of things happen. And nice things happen too. Things can happen to help you. It works like that. If you let life do it, it will unwind your stuff. There's some scars or patterns. Exactly as they need to be. And sometimes... Everything will work out. Sometimes it's like the sun is shining on you. What the heck? What's that all about? It's about it will give you the time of strength that you need so that you have the power to handle the letting go. And someday you're going to see, you'll look back and say, OMG, it was perfect. It was perfect. I got the book I needed when I needed to get it. And then something happened that made me need that I needed to get it, right? And you start seeing these patterns happening. You say, it's as if the whole universe is trying to help me cleanse. That is the meaning of your life. The meaning of your life is to go back up the lesson you came down with. Period. The rest comes and goes. That goes with you. Your inner growth stays with you. And so basically, you catch on. And you start working on yourself. You're doing serious work on yourself. This is serious work. You don't have to pay anybody, but it's okay to have help. Any way you're doing it is fine with me. As long as you're not spending your entire life trying to compensate and avoid what's going on inside of you. At least you're sitting here saying, I understand the meaning of my life is to not put more stuff in and let go of the stuff that's coming up. And the more you do it, the more you'll come in harmony with the energy is causing us to happen and it will raise you it will raise you to a level you couldn't possibly imagine of all this shakti joy rushing inside of you all the time going through all your centers pouring that's who you are you're a being of light you're a being of greatness and you bother to block that well how about we let it go not we unblock it that's not your job I made your job really easy I said don't resist that's your job don't resist don't resist what the natural process of purification that's what's happening. Life is your friend. Life is your best friend. You gotta be willing to go through the growth. You understand that? You gotta be willing to go through what it's putting you through. It's a washing machine. And it's trying to cleanse you. You think it's trying to hurt you. It's not trying to hurt you. If a coach pushes you real hard, quit. No. What do people go through for the Olympics? Well, four years, isn't it? Four years of absolute hell. Pushing their body, pushing everything. What do they get? If they're lucky, they get a gold medal. You push yourself through this, you'll be willing to go through this growth. It changes your entire being. It never goes away. It's the thing that doesn't diminish. It increases all the time. It's a joy that keeps growing. No matter how much you feel it, it's not like you ever felt it before. It's ever new. So, I mean, the rewards are ridiculous. Why am I talking about this? Because it's about to go into the new year. And you get to make some real vows. So we start the new revolution around the sun with a pole star, a guidance, a commitment that my life is about not begging and doing this and trying to get stuff to make me feel better. It's about letting go of why I don't feel good. And I'm going to do that every moment of my life.